everyone, two enormous disclaimers before we get into this video. Firstly, I do not have alternative accounts. So that basically means if you see anyone in the chat, not with my name, um, that's not me. If they claim to be me, um, that's not me. I don't have an alternate account named Lisbeth Pony Lake. I don't have, you know, alternate accounts like that. I don't do that. So if you see someone with a different name claiming to be me, just ignore them, guys. Don't don't follow that up because I've had a couple people tell me that um, and I have proof of it. So, uh, yeah. And the second disclaimer, the commentator on this video is horrible. Like, I'm really sorry for, like, the Kensington commentator because it's so general and horrible. It's horrific. But it's okay. You know what? I don't... I should really do more research, but I'm just keeping it general because, yeah. All right. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, it's Adelaide Winterstep and welcome to today's video. So in today's video, it's Kensington day three. It's kind of like day two if you consider like the events, but since we had the trot up, I'm counting it as day three. That means today is cross country, which is so exciting. We have to, actually have to head over to Vail Day Lake. Um, so we're gonna trailer there. Our horse is already groomed and braided. So I'm just gonna skip that whole part. We're gonna go ahead and take Margo out of her stall and lead her over to the trailer and just go straight to Vail Day Lake. It's supposed to be really busy um, at this time. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to find a spot to park. So as usual, we put Margot's halter on and went ahead and led her to the trailer in the back of the barn. And it's like probably a 45 minute drive to Valedale Lake. So it's a little wild, um, but we arrived there in good health and she was absolutely perfect. So while Margot is eating breakfast at the trailer, I'm going to go ahead and walk the course because it's open for the next hour. So this first jump looks pretty simplistic, but it is pretty high up, so it's going to take a lot of momentum to propel Margot up this. I think she should be good. This one is the one I was actually really concerned about. It's fairly, fairly wide, and it's just so enormous. Plus, it's behind almost like the mountain wall, so you can't really see it um, until you're like two strides away from it. So that's obviously concerning. Um, that's definitely one I wanted to watch out for, just considering its height and its location. So this year's Kensington course is challenging not just because of the jumps, but also because of the amount of galloping and just full out sprinting you have to do for this course. Um, so the jumps are so spaced out that the only way you can really make up a good time is by going through this empty space at a really good pace. Obviously though, it takes in a huge amount of endurance um, doing such a long course that it's a little bit concerning that I would really have to work out to make sure I pace it well so that Margot doesn't get exhausted by the end because at the end is where all the jumps are. And so by that time your horse is exhausted and doesn't wanna jump, but um, we'll just definitely have to see how that all turns out. So this jump is kind of at a weird angle. I'm going to have to approach it at almost a diagonal angle and it's a fence too and it's just so upright. So that's concerning, but not to mention the ground here goes a little bit deeper. It's a little bit deep and I don't want to force Margot to go through this ground. So I might have to cut it a little closer to the rock where the footing is a little bit better, but it's a little more risky considering we'll have to approach it at definitely a more angled um, approach. So I'll have to look at that and think of some way that would work best for both of us. This is the course's largest jump and let me just show this to you. It is like triple the logs and it's absolute insanity. It's enormous especially compared to the other jumps. It's just huge and considering that it's after you know galloping straight just straight through different areas your horse is going to be exhausted so by the time you get here your horse is going to be lazy and um, I want to make sure that Margo's able to get over it so we definitely really have to work on pacing ourselves to make sure that she still has enough energy to jump something this large. Something that I'm really excited for is this little um, mini river stream that we have to cross. I think it'll be kind of a good spot to recuperate Margo to finish strong and to be able to go just quick at the end and just kind of cut off those last few seconds. I think the water will help cool her down and just kind of get her refreshed and uh, fresh again. So because we go on the course in about 30 minutes, I geared up and Margo, I had her lunged by Maya because Maya is here helping me. So I put on my cross country gear and Marco was ready lunge. So I would just walk, trot around and pop over a couple of warm up jumps and never forget your helmet. So the following video is now going to be pre-recorded Kensington. You all love it. You get it. And I think you understand. It also has GoPro footage. So I hope you guys watch the whole thing and enjoy. 
Good day, everyone. It's Rebecca Jensen, and it's the official day three of Kensington. Today is cross country. Tomorrow will be show jumping. We are at the gorgeous Valdale Lake. Look at that background. It is incredible here, and we're so excited to compete on this lovely Saturday. We are looking at a couple of different challenging jumps. Jump number two is a wide, wide base. It's going to take a lot of momentum and cadence to propel a horse up this. We're hoping that the competitors are able to clear this one since it's so tall and large. Jump number seven is the largest on course. Look at this masterpiece. It is enormous and after going through miles of galloping, horses will be way too exhausted to try and jump over this one. We're going to see quite a few competitors struggle to get over it and so we're hoping to see some exciting footage. This is jump number five and it is by far one of the more challenging ones considering the approach is at a diagonal. Adelaide Winter Step and Embargo 24 are up and they're starting at a slow pace. Maybe they'll pick it up once they realize that they really need to cut a couple seconds off. The people already on the scoreboards have exceptional times and she's going to need to do an exceptional performance to beat that. Keep in mind that the GoPro and the video do not match up. The video is edited and the GoPro is raw footage so they won't match up exactly but they still give you two separate views. Adelaide is on to the long gallop area where it's pure galloping until she reaches the next jump. It's going to be exhausting and she's going to need to make sure she saves Margot's energy so that they still have enough energy, energy to jump the last five jumps. It's definitely challenging and I'm hoping that she can do this. Here she gets that diagonal angle just right, clearing it absolutely perfect. The next jump is a little bit simpler, but she's about to approach the largest fence on course. And she clears it, we are very happy. Give it up for Adelaide Warner Step in Fargo 24, an excellent, excellent run. Now we have a recap of some of their best jumps with the diagonal fence, another following jump, and another jump at that downward angle. Lovely, lovely run for Adelaide Warner Step and Embargo 24. This ranking board is the raw rankings for cross country and not the accumulative score of all three events. In first place, we have Dacia Undergrove, following Adelaide Winterstep, Chloe Desqual, Arvella Silverclaw, Molly Emberwolf, Madeline Wolfside, Teresa Waterfall, Elizaveta Stillfire, and Delfina Dragonlord. Don't we just love our commentator, Rebecca Jensen? It's great, great style. Thank you everyone so much for watching this. I hope you like this. It took me a while to figure out how to do the GoPro and it kind of doesn't fit, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, that was really fun. I guess I kind of figured out some new editing styles too. In the meantime, they were minute, but you'll notice them later on in my future videos. Um, I can put them to good use. Make sure to check out all my platforms. I have a new Instagram. It's called Silverglade Equestrian, Silverglade underscore Equestrian. Make sure to check that out. That's the Silverglade Equestrian team Instagram. Make sure to also check out my personal Instagram, Adelaide Winterstep. Also, check out the website for Silver Glade Equestrian and my Yorvik H magazine. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and see you guys tomorrow. Bye!